You're listening to Out There with Jeff Rector. Jeff Rector. Welcome to Out There, the show that focuses on the genres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror on television, the big screen, the media, the internet, and everywhere else in the universe. Sit down in your favorite electric chair, pour yourself a pint of blood, and open your psychic connection because you're connected to Out There. Welcome to another episode of Out There. I have with me David Michael Latt from The Asylum, writer, director, producer, founder. So they love you. I know, it's Sharknado crazy. Sharknado fans everywhere. David, 25 years. You're celebrating the 25th anniversary of The Asylum. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's and you've a been milestone. Part of that. You were part of that, so it's all good. I'm thrilled to be part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a big party for AFM last year. You rented out the Santa Monica Pier Amusement Park. We did. We did. That's a, that's a, we don't do that's anything. That's a big deal. We don't do anything half ass. Well, except for <laughs> you, movies. Um, you know, as so long as the parties are big, the, the that's, parties that's are, all that matters. Mm -hmm. um, $25 in gameplay on the uh, Boardwalk Games, which was great. Oh, wait. That's news to me. We did Oh, what? that's the okay. extra bill you got yeah. that you weren't Makes aware sense of. now. Yeah, I walked away with a uh, stuffed panda and an octopus. Great. It was. It I was, was missing. Good. My kids were missing a stuffed uh, panda and, and octopus. So now I know where that it went. Was, that you. was the two. Yeah. Okay. They were just sitting there on a bench mm -hmm. next to the two kids. So I grabbed it and. Uh, yeah. All right. We're done. What a then. party. Okay. What a party that was. It was fun. Um, my date and I were on the carousel and we had just gotten to the top. What a view. And the power went out. We don't pay our bills. <laughs> the power went That's... out on the. Yeah. The pier is like, what? Someone said, oh, that's asylum. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just roll with the punches, and uh, <laughs> we don't know who, you know, it's, it, it, part of that airplane gag is like, what is this for? Um, oops, sorry. Uh, huh? and, and we replugged back the uh, extension cord, and then the whole Whoops. pier went back on again. But, yeah, that's uh, that must have been fun. That was, we, had a, we had the best view in the, the, the whole place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun up That's there. That's why I don't I don't do anything. I just stay on the ground, you know, because I, I I know the asylum and I expected the power to go out. So you know, and aliens to attack and murders to happen and you know the 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 pier to collapse. To so ground. much to do. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Two there's hours. Lot. And funnel cones, free food and funnel cones. It was really fantastic. The only thing I demanded because my partners I guess like drinking, so they liked the open bar. I said, look, I just want dots available the dipping dots available until midnight because last time we did this uh, 10 year 15 year party at the pier they closed at 10 and i couldn't get any dipping dots what? so i said look i don't care what we do we just <laughs> have want to have the dipping that dots yeah. this is very fascinating to to your uh viewers but uh, there you go i demanded the dipping dots that was my diva moment so you uh you made a special movie for the 25th anniversary and you we kind did. of it was a amalgamation of a lot of your films right characters uh, yeah, it was um, uh, our 25th anniversary film, Armageddon. It was a fun project to do. We, we, we got to see a lot of old faces from, you know, 25 years of making movies and stuff. And, you know, we used the Asylum universe as the models for the films, and, and uh, it, was, Brilliant. it was great. Yeah, yeah I, well, when I was uh, uh, had audition, they said, you need to have done at least two Asylum films. To yes, qualify to be in this. I go. I did three. So I, I think uh, I th I think we tried to. It, there were just so many people that I, uh, that wanted to be, and I think sure, we, we were course. at like five, really, where we wanted to be. But um, uh, so that's yeah. So hopefully everybody is you know uh, in their a recognizable face after about five of these movies. I think Sarah did a good fifteen. Oh who, yeah, who, lead, who sure. was the lead, and and the guy did about ten, and. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. So it, it's a nice family. It's a record. Uh, it's you know we've had uh, Gerald did uh, Gerald Webb did about twenty eight uh, really? of our films. Wow. Yeah, he was our casting director too, so he kind of cast himself That's... and things. But luckily, he's a very good actor. So if you it, need uh... a casting director. <laughs> I'm available. Go. There you go. I'm a very hard worker. <laughs> you are a hard worker. Um. So where, where can where can people see it now? Uh, well, 
Uh, the Asylum has a lot of fast channels, which means that um, we have movie channels on free television like uh, Pluto and Tubi and Roku and Freezy and all the words that uh, sound like they're made up. Um, uh, but aren't. But aren't. Um, uh, and then we have pay channels like In Demand and stuff. Um, so it's on multiple platforms. Oh, multiple now. platforms. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, that seems to be where all these you know, shows domestically live. Internationally, we have different places where they kind of pop up. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think we've got a, a little teaser for that. Let's uh, take a look. Okay. So that was uh, a teaser for our 25 years of uh, Asylum shows. Um, we've uh, made about 300 movies. Crazy. A, a, a few TV series and whatnot. So uh, all whittled down to 30 seconds of trailer. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of... It's a lot of sharks, zombies, explosions. Yeah, I think robots. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. It, it's uh, depending on on where you entered the asylum universe. We're either the horror company, we're the mockbuster company. We did the thrillers for Lifetime. We do rom coms. We do all the genres. So you know, it's I don't we, uh, religious movies. I mean, it, um, it. So we're known for certain things. Certainly Sharknado, but. Um, uh, outside of that, uh, it, it, it's interesting the fan base. Well, let's uh, let's let's talk about the mockbusters. Sure. You know, the uh, you, you do knockoffs or similar titles to the blockbuster films at the time. For example, instead of Transformers, you did Transmorphers, but you actually released it two days before Transformers. Sure. <laughs> That's that's what it says on Wikipedia. I'm just uh, <laughs> I, reading yeah, I, what uh, what it said, but uh. sure. Uh, I mean, it, it, you know, when we do the uh, the um, uh, the mockbusters, which are not a lot of what we do, um, uh, we try and time it uh, to the release of what the studios are doing. Sure, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it is 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 a little more shocking to hear that back in the day we did it before the release, just simply because. We tend to always miss deadlines, so um, uh, <laughs> well, so more. You didn't this time? <laughs> no, we didn't. All right, there you go. <laughs> they, they had a missed deadline, <laughs> and, all, you, and you took they, advantage. They probably of it. did. That's probably uh, more uh, apropos. Yes. Uh, one company did snakes on planes. You did snakes on trains. Yes. Instead of the day the earth stood still, you did did the day the earth stopped. It stopped. It's the same thing. Stop! Well, it's still nothing's happening. See, right? Well, in in our films, at least something's happened. <laughs> you know, we we get rid of the drama. It's usually a lot of uh, genre action. One company did Pacific Rim. You did Atlantic Rim. Completely different. Completely different. Abraham Lincoln versus vampires. You did Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Not the same movie. Our or is do I need to get my lawyer involved? Are you like uh, <laughs> rattling off a list of? Uh, uh, am I in trouble here? Is this? Is this? Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah, the lawyer will be calling in on Zoom any minute now. Great. I'm just sort of prepping him. And uh, Jurassic World, you did Triassic World. We did, and others as well. We've had a lot I, of Triassic uh, World. Uh, sounds cooler to me. I think so. You know, Triassic time was much more dangerous than Jurassic time. Please, yeah. everyone knows that. <laughs> if you're, yeah. If you're into archaeology at all, you know what. Then you wouldn't watch our movie, yeah, because <laughs> it, it, you're logic, watching Indiana so, Jones. You're the logic watching, is not going to work. <laughs> you're not watching this stuff. 
So uh, Steve Jobs started Apple computers in his yeah. garage. How how did you guys get started? Uh, in Steve's garage, we um, uh, when he wasn't doing com- on the right, weekends, we had to move all was... this crap out, and um, uh, we started making movies. Uh, well, it, it it happened a little bit over twenty five years ago. Uh, my partner and I, David Ramau, we had made a film or two prior to starting our company. Uh, we had day jobs, and we were both fired in the same month of our day jobs. He worked at Village Roadshow. I worked at a company called uh, Chimera uh, Multimedia. We were doing educational videos. Um, and, uh, and you're still doing educational kinda, videos. Yeah, very, pretty much. Uh, and uh, and so we took that as kind of a, a calling that uh, we should probably just, all right, no one else is going to hire us in this world. Let's go start our own company and, and do this legitimately. Sure. So, uh, so for the first four years, we were a distribution company for the most part. We worked out of uh, his apartment. Um, so not better out than of a, a garage. garage. Yeah, a little better in the garage. Um, although it's got Ramally, a stove and a refrigerator, my, my partner would still be late for meetings, even though he'd be sleeping in the next room. Um, so. <laughs> You're late again, can't you? Can't you make a deadline? I'm always early. He's always late. It, it, but it, so between the two of us, we get there on time. Uh, and um, uh, so we would just kind of take on any jobs we could. Uh, Ramawi's position has always been to find new jobs and new opportunities. It's kind of his, I call him the Steve Jobs of the company where he just has that vision and goes after it and, right. and, and makes things happen. And well, I, I'm the one who makes things happen. And so, um, uh, you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, roads that we took got us to production, which is where we wanted to end, be, you know, at the end of the day. And so I handle all the production part of it. I don't handle really the business part of it. Um, and so at any given time, I'm producing a movie. Uh, so that's that's kind of the origin story. See, he's more the business partner and you're more the hands-on? Yeah, I always say that he makes the money, I spend the money. Uh, it, it works out Gotta very well. Got to have money to spend money. There you go. Uh, and we started with another partner, uh, Sherry Strain. Uh, she was also at Village Roadshow. She was also let go. I think she was let go. Or she was like, oh, this is interesting between the two of you guys making a movie, uh, making movies. Let's go. You know, I, I'd like to kind of do that as well. Um, and and so it was the three of us working out of the uh, apartment. I don't want to just uh, characterize <laughs> it just the two of us. It was three of us. And, and there was um, only one bed, which was <laughs> well, we, we don't won't go there. That. It was crazy times back in the crazy, '90s. Um, crazy '90s. You know, we were all hippies back then. <laughs> In our members-only jackets. Everybody was living together. Um, dog sleeping with cats. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and and she handled a lot of the admin stuff, uh, mostly. Uh, Romani handled uh, a lot of new business, and I handled kind of the grunt work stuff. Because I, I, I love production. I love everything about it. I could, you know, and so I would... If I wasn't line producing one of the shows he brought in, I was editing trailers, I was editing things, I was putting together packages, doing key art, doing whatever. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, I pretty much have done every position on set. Um, not well. They're it's all hands saying, on deck. But but I have I'm a little dangerous because I know a little bit all of all of it. So when someone sure. says, "Hey, we can't do that," I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you can." <laughs> and this you is how can because I ain't doing it. <laughs> and this is how we're gonna do you, it. You um, will do it. That's right. That's fantastic. In 2005, you did a low budget version, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Right. Released the same year, Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Blockbuster Video ordered 100,000 copies. And now they're bankrupt. What is, what's your point? <laughs> Causation with correlation? Look, is, is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, we destroyed the company. They spent all their money on yeah, you. I they know. were, they were um, investors, really, in your well, company. Well, uh, they kind of were a little bit. They, um, you know, part of what we were doing was we were a distribution company, a first-time filmmaker, so art house movies. And um, so that's, you know, look, we were young. We needed the money. We did art house movies, uh, critically acclaimed art house movies. And that was a program that um, don't sell. That don't sell. Uh, but <laughs> we discovered that um, we had this output deal with um, with Hollywood Video, and we were releasing about ten films every month of first time filmmakers, and we had hundreds of titles. And um, they gave us a, a, an end cap, you know, a lot wow. of promotion. I mean, it was a whole thing. And so when we went to duplicate that over Blockbuster. Um, they went, yeah, we don't want this art house film crap. Right. We want genre films. And so we're like, great, we'll do genre films, and um, which is what we love to do anyway. So um, 
at the time, a new company was coming out called Lionsgate, and Lionsgate had their Ooh. claws in, yes, uh, in in all these genre films, especially horror. Right. And so when it came down to, hey, the Asylum's making an offer for your movie, or Lionsgate's going to make an offer, a really nice offer, well, we always lost. Right. So ultimately, this is a long story to your War of the Worlds, but ultimately, um, we convinced Blockbuster to say, hey, look, why don't we produce these films for you, because we can't acquire them. Right. Okay? So we're, we'll make these genre movies uh, – horror films this is the cheapest way of going uh, and you'll release them twice you know once a month and then it became twice a month because it, it did so well because we made them to order sure and so we were down that track about two or two years into it and we I'd always want to make uh, I always wanted to make war of the worlds I'm a big fan of, of HG Wells and I thought it was a, a, a perfect you know Original product classic and um, and so we went you know my partner Dave was like they're not going to go for it. Paramount's already making it with Spielberg. It's not going to be a big right. thing, so let's not, you know, touch it. And that was in January. By October, I'm like, look, you know, I I had written the script and and, and I want really wanted. <laughs> We're to do doing this. Could, well, no, no, I don't. I don't necessarily. Say, it's it's still a democracy, but but I said, look, I have the script. Could you at least ask them? It's like, all right, I'll ask them. So we he approached Blockbuster and basically they said, not only do we want it. Um, but we will protect you when Paramount comes knocking at our door, and we will make sure wow. that you release it because these these well we we would call them later mockbusters right. um, do very well for us, and it's a public domain. We're not going to get into trouble. We want to do this, and so do it. So it, it, we got to go ahead in December. We were shooting in January of '05, and we released it in May. And wow, to this day, it's, it's, it's our it's our biggest seller. And it, true to form. Uh, Paramount did come in and they knocked to the door and they said, you know, if you don't pull this, we're going to pull all of our titles. And the head of Blockbuster said, pull the titles. You know, we're you're not going to tell us how we're how to do business. Of course, wow, they, he that's probably, great. He probably should listen to them because, uh, you know, of course, eventually they went bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, but, um, didn't uh, work out so well. For didn't work out so well. Not necessarily because of, of War of the Worlds, well, right? But, but um, uh, you know, for other things. But uh, it was it was great to have that protection, and because it did so well. We did another film after that that was Mockbusters. And so the Mockbuster kind of trajectory started at that point. That was the base point. And so, um, and, and so from there, we kind of – a lot of our buyers wanted kind of Mockbusters, things that were going on in the studios um, uh, that we could make at a lower uh, price point that the right. audience was still like. So, right. so uh, perception too of it, – it, It's it, – you know, the reason why I think the mockbusters do well is because they ride off of the interest of the audience. So of if the course. audience wants to see transforming robots, well, they're going to see, uh, you know, other movies about transforming robots. Right. If they don't want to see a movie about an exorcism, they're not – and it doesn't do well – Is they're not going to want to see ours because they just don't want to see an exorcism movie. Right. You know, so um, – that's where it kind of falls apart when when it doesn't when the studio version. So it's still do a well. gamble, even even when you have a formula that seems to work right. for you. It's still a gamble. There's no guarantees in this. No, business. no guarantee in business. Yes, I worked business. with Roger Corman. I've heard of him early on. Yes, and the King of Schlock, and um, you know that's where I learned filmmaking, and I kept my mouth shut, and you know I started in a lot of his movies, but I learned a lot. Sure. By watching these, he's guys. fantastic. And it was any influence uh, on, on you, any connection with Roger? Well, um, uh, no. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay, and, moving yeah, on. Well, moving on. Uh, the because, quite frankly, when I was when I was growing up in the seventies and eighties, you know, I looked at myself and said, "Oh, Spielberg was my model," and right, and right. and all those guys, Lucas and and Donner and all of them, and the big studios were my goal. Okay, so the B movies, the C movies, I I had no interest. They looked cheap, and and it was not my <laughs> cup of tea. Gonna watch that you know? cheap shit. And you know, I I've I've told the story before, but um, <laughs> I'll say it again, which is that you know my biggest thing was I just don't want to be like Larry Cohen. Okay, um, I love Larry Cohen. Well, here's here's my story about Larry Cohen. King is that, Cohen is is and because he made <laughs> schlocky films that it's like I don't you know this is a world that I don't get. I think you know he's not invested. I, whatever. Anyways, f flash forward. I dated his daughter in college, and I got to know Larry very well. Very well, and and I I just nice Jewish I, boy. I got to tell you, my favorite stories are from Larry. My favorite films are from Larry now. I mean, it just it opened my my world up. It wasn't a guy throwing away, you know, his uh, creativity or right. whatever. It was a guy investing in his creativity. It was a guy investing into these stories and really making something special. And so, because of that, it was like, you know, I did a, a complete uh, turn about you know my perception of this 
B movie genre uh, that changed my life, and and I would be lucky to have one tenth of what he did and what he stood for and his position in the world and everything else. So I came into it very late in the game. Right. Um, so I didn't really know about Stuart Gordon. I didn't know about Roger Corman. I didn't know about all these guys because that wasn't in my world. Eventually, it, it you know it became my world, and right. so I'm a little more educated on it. And it's amazing what what they do. And I, I have so much respect for what, uh, for, for what they went through and how they did it. And they did it on their own terms and their independence and, and whatnot. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. So, uh, so they created the invaders. Yes. One of my favorite series <laughs> growing up, the sci-fi series. It, it, yes. I mean, it, there's, you, you can't re you look, you can point to the big shiny films, the Spielbergs right. and those guys, but Everyone, you know, ninety nine percent of the other stuff is are people from you know Larry Cohen and Sam Arkoff and these guys um, that um, uh, really created the industry. And if not them, then we wouldn't be here in a lot of ways. Broke a lot and of boundaries. So, broke, uh, absolutely. And so you know, w so the short answer to to, to a long <laughs> a long answer is, is that uh, <laughs> oh, Roger still Corman on that yeah, question? is that Roger Corman didn't influence me because I really didn't get, get to it till late in the game. Right. But I I've met Roger a couple times and and he's still with it and he's still very acutely aware of what's going on and which I say that because my my parents were were. Uh, younger when he when they died, but you know I, I get as you get older, you know that's not the easiest thing is to be uh, uh, mentally acute and, and aware, and he is on all right. aspects and knows more about this industry than, than anybody else, and it's uh, you know it's it's an honor to be in in the same space. Um, uh, in in that, I'm, I'm nowhere near you know where he is, but uh, it's, I, I it's, think though in a lot of ways you've surpassed Roger. Oh no, no, because no. he had a he had a certain. Um, Format, you know, if I spend the, and, and, and you do the same sort of thing, you know what a movie costs, you know what it can mm -hmm. make. You go, if we do it under this, we know we're going to make this. He, he had a certain model, but he never went beyond the model, even though he had the money. And that was the one thing that, that I, I, I said, man, if, you know. Step but, it up a little but bit. But he, when he did Frankenstein, he was given millions, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he did that. Right. You know, I mean, so I mean, given the opportunity, he took it and did things with it. Right. Um, uh, you know, look, you know, back, you know, more than 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's it was difficult and expensive to make movies. You know, now everyone has an iPhone and it's easy oh, to yeah, kind of put ridiculous. together. Yeah. You know, you're making for a fraction of the cost. So you, if you were a certain director, you were that director. And so the risk of putting that same director into a different genre or giving that person more money was a huge risk, you know, to the money people, you know, in mind. Now, you know, uh, I have someone like Anthony Ferrante, who is our in-house director who directed Sharknado, but he was a, um, uh, a horror guy at first. And he's now done rom-coms he's done uh westerns oh, yeah. he's done you know and and he, because he's talented and he's very good at what he does right. as, as a director um and he's not pigeonholed because we we don't have to the the risk of investing that money isn't as great as it was with when roger was was you know doing these things so i i don't fault him because i i think he probably would have taken advantage of those things had he been given more opportunity i know his brother was an executive over at the studios but you know he played in in the space that he was comfortable in yeah. um and when he, given the opportunity, he did it just like with us, with doing the TV series or going, getting higher in the budgets with Sharknado uh, and that kind of stuff. I mean, we're, we're we you know we don't we we don't go out there saying let's go make the the cheapest movie that we could make. Right. You know it, it. You know, but that's because we we understand the market. We can only make the movie for how much the market's going to pay for it. So uh, if not a little bit cheaper, so that we could actually pay our employees. Um, and so we don't. It, you know, we I know my partner David uh, and and to some extent Paul, um, they push the boundaries to try and get the bigger you know deal, um, sure. but it's just not always available. No, you know. And and uh, Christopher Ray is your uh, executive in charge of production. Mm -hmm. I used to work for his father, Fred Olin Ray. Sure, did movies for him, and I learned from him and Jim Wynorski and oh, yeah. who was directing for Roger Corman. I learned so much for these guys. Um, I had the pleasure of just doing uh, Ape versus Mecha Ape with uh, with Tom Arnold, and uh, I mean, I look at the list of actors that you've mm -hmm. been able to get for these films: Linda Hamilton, John Savage, John Hurd, Bruce Davison, 
Michael Madsen, Christopher Lloyd, Eric Roberts, Vivica Fox, Lou Ferrigno, Sean Young, Tom Sizemore, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Dick Van Did Dyke. Did an asylum film, Casper yeah. Van Deen, Ian Ziering, of course, and all the. Does such a great job on all the Sharknado films. Mm -hmm. You don't get talent like that. Unless you write him a check. Unless you write him a check. Yeah, there you and go. And you okay. spend some money. <laughs> um, no, but. <laughs> Listen, they see the value too in this stuff. And they look. I I feel like look. You're, you're not going to go to the asylum because you're you 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 want the big paycheck. You you go and work at the asylum right. because we offer you opportunity to work and right. also maybe in a genre that you're not used to. Um, or some like, a script that's fun. They read and they go, hey, you know, this might be kind of well, fun. I don't know if anyone reads the script, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll assume they do. Um, per peruse the script. Yes, uh, see the title page. Uh, you know, they, they like to act. I mean, you know, actors like to, I'm married to an actor. She loves to act. I mean, it's, it's not about the paycheck. It's about, you know, uh, getting the ability to, to perform. And because we make two to five movies a month, I mean, we have a lot of opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to act. And some of these guys also like to direct too. So it's, um, so, you know, we've, we've had a lot of actors that, you know, have gotten their first time, like Casper Van Dien. Sure. His first directorial uh, film was with us. Uh, uh, Tommy C. Thomas Howell, his first film was with us. Um, you know, and oh, they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. Um, uh, yeah, it gives it, them an opportunity to, the studios aren't going to let them direct anything. Not really, no. It, it gives them a chance to, to stretch their legs and do something. I think everybody would like it, to direct. It, Most it, of them don't have the talent, but uh, they'd like to. Acting is, is, um, well, anything in this business is it's freelance yep. and it's 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 difficult. I mean, it's uh, um, you know it's job to job, uh, and it's a tough business to be in. You know, to have to survive in it, um, and um, you know, I I'm grateful for the. Uh, the opportunities that we have and that we've given people and the longevity of the company and what we built. Um, it's a family, um, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's great. You know, someone like Chris, who's been with us, Chris Olin Ray, who's been with us for 15 plus years, maybe 20. Sure. I mean, it's, um, he's probably worked on over a hundred movies with us. Um, Anthony, I like I, that's incredibly valuable. It is. It's, he it's, knows it's, how to do it and he knows how to do yeah. it your way. And he enjoys doing it, and right. he loves it. Right, and um, I, I think we surround ourselves with people who are very passionate about you know making movies, and you know we still have this mentality. Of, uh, I would say of working out of the apartment, and you know where it's like, hey, my mom can make the curtains, and um, <laughs> you know we haven't really gotten to this institutional studio mindset. Um, at least I don't think we have. Maybe you talk to some of the other employees, and it might be different, but. Um, uh, for the most part, it, it's it's kind of a family. I've always called it a family, and sure. and it's good to see people after all these years. And yeah, we're getting older. <laughs> it's it's uh, pretty time, crazy. Time drags on. You look the same though. I, it's I, the uh, Dick know. Clark injections. Oh my gosh! I've been doing. You've it. been it's the uh, only way that works. Using his stem cells. <laughs> you, you want to tap dance? Is that uh, yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, Bermuda Tentacles was the first film I, I did for you guys. I auditioned for a lot of stuff over the years, and it was a great one. Linda Hamilton, John Savage, yeah. Jamie Kennedy, Tate Donovan. who played a, a serious uh, uh, scientist. Yeah. yeah. It just really against type, and he was, he was great. He was great, and we hired him again for a thriller where he played the psycho bad guy because uh, he's so good. Um, and we just did a horror film that we tried to get him in, but his schedule just collapsed, uh, you know, because he's uh, does he's an active stand up comedian. So, you know, we sure. couldn't work around the, his tour schedule. But I can't wait to work with him again. Just a terrific guy and a terrific actor. And and but yes, going against type. It's great. Uh, my understanding, it was it was a little bit higher budget. Yes. Than yes. Your, your normal films. And 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 it shows, obviously, to get Linda Hamilton and people like that. Yeah. But the visual effects were were amazing. Uh, we, you know, we've lucked out over the years. I mean, you know, we've had different teams come in, but pretty consistent. Our, 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 
our head visual effects guy has been with us even before he was an employee. Um, Glenn with Campbell. Us, Glenn Campbell. Glenn and, and I were tour guides at Universal Studios together. I don't you're know not if you that knew old. That. <laughs> I, in the 80s, I was. Oh, my goodness. Well, he worked on um, Blade Runner, the first one. He worked on um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Did I, mean, he? I yeah. didn't know that. Um, he's, he's amazing. He's uh, And his team that he assembled is uh, top notch. And, and it, it, it's just, it's. It's so fun to see the creations, you know, on a daily basis because they literally have – they're usually doing about um, 100 shots per show and they have two weeks to do it and, and they're all overlapping. Oh, so, yeah. so they'll do a, a couple hundred uh, a week that we'll, that we'll look at. And, you know, the, the worst ones are still great, you know, uh, yeah. and then they just get better. Yeah. Well, the trailer for uh, Bermuda Tentacles just just blew me away. I still love watching it over and over again. In fact, I think uh, I think we've got it. Let's take a look. Great. We got our flying is strapped in, Mr. President. We are flying over the Bermuda Triangle, after all. Oh, we're to evacuate now, Mr. President. I'm trying to save you. Good luck, sir. Morning, Sergeant Oliver. We have a situation. You and your team at ease. will rescue the president. Booyah! I'm ready to rock. Let's do this. Hey, Revis. All ships authorized to engage. Authorized to... We've landed in what appears to be an underwater cabin. <laughs> People will die. We got something coming in starboard side, and it's big. You really think this is gonna work? You destroy the hell out of that ship. Now that's a kick-ass trailer. There you go. We do good trailers. <laughs> you do great <laughs> trailers. Directed by the fabulous Nick Lyon. Oh, sure. Nick's an old one, too, with us. Nick is great. Yeah. He did uh, Titanic 666. He did. Was that your first film uh, with Tubi? It wasn't our when first you, film with Tubi. You but, made a deal uh, with uh, Tubi. We did. We um, uh, A multi-picture deal with Tubi. Various genres. I mean... Um, we're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, and they, you know they are too. Well, I mean, they probably know by now. It's been a few years, but um, you know, so we've done a musical, uh, horror, uh, westerns. Um, uh, we He's a very versatile director too. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and Nick's done multiple genres with us, um, from zombies and tentacles to rom coms and uh, Christmas and. Uh, I can't see him directing a rom com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a beautiful one. Uh, uh, Christmas in Vienna was... Uh, Chris, I mean, it was a Christmas movie. can movie, only but, happen in Vienna. Oh, it's beautiful. Christmas is nowhere else beautiful. in the country. And uh, Max Elfelt, uh, who I think directed... You were in uh, uh, Bachelor Nights, right? No. Ah, darn it. I got it. S name more movies that, you're that not I in? wasn't in. Oh, boy. We can embarrass go. Yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, nationwide, uh, millions of people. We'll get you in something. This, this is a promise. He'll be in more. He'll be in more. <laughs> so you can do our fiftieth anniversary. Uh, <laughs> 50th, uh, that's right. And I'll still look the same. It'll you, be. It'll you be will crazy. still be the same. Yeah, still the same. So you created a faith-based division, and you did a, uh, a Christian version of High School Musical. Right. Yes, we did. Sunday I Scumies. want to hear that story. Uh, I think they were at a convention, my partners, and and uh, and they said, boy, what would really be good because uh, uh, High School Musical is coming out. We had a faith-based one. Because we're so Christian. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know what – I think it, it was a, a convention with the video distributors. And um, and so he said, well, we're going to – we'll go make a uh, Sunday School Musical. And that was directed by Rachel Goldenberg, who um, – Absolutely one of my favorite directors. To this day, I just, it, it, it's such a joyful, you know, movie that was so difficult to put together because <laughs> we had choreography and music and, right. and, and the whole night. And, and, and it was what, P, PG? It was family friendly, right? Very fa family friendly. I, I mean, this would be yeah. G. They, yeah. you know, uh, Faith, uh, the they label was called Faith gosh. Films. Yeah, in that, it, it, I mean, in that, the, I mean, one of the reasons why we kind of uh, golly, ended, no, no, we can't say that ended the 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 faith films labels because the audience for the faith films was 
is 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 really intense, kind of like a sci-fi audience or a horror audience, except, you know, so it's like, so it's like oh, that's not the right garlic for uh, for Dracula. It's like, yeah. you know, they have the same <laughs> problems with faith, faith-based movies. And so we would get, you know, dinged on things that you can't control. Like, oh, that actor did a rated R movie and they said, damn. Right. You know, it's like, so we can't pick it up now in, in our in our family-based oh, movie. It's like, wow. what are you talking about? You know, uh, and, and so it was so kind of out of control in that way that it just profitability-wise didn't really make sense. We made a few, and I'm really happy with those films. But again, it was just, uh, it, it's an audience that, you know, you really got to be all in, and um, uh, and it, it just was too complicated. But you did it. But we did it. You we did it. A and chance, we chance. You tried something new. And absolutely. We, you know, one of the great things about. How did it do? I don't know. I think you know. I, you know, I I <laughs> I, I quit with these movies uh, after <laughs> uh, you know once once the show is done shooting, I'm out. Um, yeah, yeah. My yeah, partners yeah. take over. Distribution takes over. Uh, and I'm kind of you know I, if I end up seeing the finished film, it'll be a shock. Um, it's usually at a screening like Mecca Ape, you right. know. We're all see the film for the first time, uh, right. put together. My partner David kind of handles all the post stuff on it. I oversee it, and if there's a problem, I get the phone call. You know, we need to reshoot something. We need, you know, there's a problem sure. here. Why didn't this work? It's like, all right. Um, uh, but otherwise, you know, I, I kind of, I'm again busy producing so many shows during the month that. Um, it's very difficult for me to, on top of that, do post stuff. So I've strategically pulled my way from that, and I also don't necessarily deal with the uh, distribution. Right. So distribution-wise, if someone says, hey, I saw the movie in a theater or I saw it on this station, I'd be, okay, good. I didn't even know we, re- we released it, um, right. which is not a great you know, uh, way to micromanage a company. But um, uh, again, it's uh, it's just trying to manage the few hours that I have, you know, during the day and night uh, to get these things. I mean, I'm well, you can only do so much, but but everybody really does pull their own way. Yeah, everybody has their niche and and they do it well. And and you guys are gelled together beautifully. It, it it seems it's it's very organized chaos. It seems to you know uh, work. We're we're all very hyphenated people. So it's uh, if if one doesn't do one thing, we can kind of handle the other. I mean, in, in emergencies, you know, I, I can go to the sales meetings and and almost sound intelligent. Um, I, it's not my favorite thing to do, but um, to sound intelligent because that's a lot of work for me. But um, uh, but yeah, we have and we have a great support team, and we have about forty five employees. Wow, that's cr- and that doesn't include um, you know production um, for the most part. Production's a freelance you know business. Sure. So, uh, although we have in-house people, so we have about forty-five people. About half of those people are sales and distribution um, and accounting. So all the money things and the contract things and the business admin things, and they're phenomenal and fantastic um, and are great at what they do. So I don't have to necessarily worry about that stuff right. anyway. Well, I want to get back to uh, uh, Titanic six 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 real sure. quick. What a what a great premise that was uh, a new cruise ship titanic 2 is uh, on its maiden voyage there's uh, artifacts and and antiques from the original titanic on board and the spirits that are attached to these objects come alive and start killing everybody it happens. that's brilliant now yeah you shot it on the queen mary didn't yes. you mm-hmm. you shot it on a haunted ship yes there had to be some crazy shit that went on. Uh, since, it's haunted. Everybody knows it's haunted. Yeah, I'd like to be more colorful but about it, but since I don't believe in any of that uh, voodoo stuff, uh, yeah. it doesn't really affect me. And quite frankly, I wasn't necessarily – I mean, I was on set a right. bit, quite a bit, but not enough for things to be haunted. I will say that like the wardrobe person came in or whoever says, oh, my God, I was downstairs and whatever happens. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's always kind of removed from me. Right. Um, but I'm like, okay. Uh, well, you don't want any part of it. Yeah, yeah. you deal it, with the, the you know, the, demons. The, I, the one thing is we got, got a private to tour of, of the ship, which was great. And so we did see some of the haunted right. you know, stuff where people you know, thought they saw things. And, and uh, that, was, that was neat. Yeah. So you're absolutely, staunchly against ghosts and the supernatural world. They're you great have no for the, belief the, at all? They're great for stories. <laughs> I, I, I okay. like telling the stories. Yeah. Uh, and, and right. you know, we say this and then, you know, tonight I'll be haunt, uh, visited by three guys. I, I get the, the irony of this. What but, do you uh, mean you don't believe in us? <laughs> do you believe now? <laughs> you know. Your face gets ripped off. 
<laughs> we're going to take a quick break. My gosh, the time flies when we're having fun. Um, we're going to do a quick break. Check out a teaser for my uh, series, SFN Science Fiction News. And this is James Hong. You're watching Science Fiction News. SFN coming your way. David Michael Latt from The Asylum. You've got a new TV series coming up. We do. Um, uh, it's called Disaster Strike Force. Um, it stars uh, um, uh, Grant Bowler and uh, uh, Mackenzie Westmore. and um, Michael Westmore's daughter. Yes, mm -hmm, from Face Off. Uh, it's one of those He's things. A, he did my makeup on Star Trek. Oh, my goodness. The Next Generation. There you go. See how I bring it all back it, to it, me? It always comes back to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's a I plug it, myself <laughs> sometime. Um, He's a great guy, and she's yeah, sweet too. Oh, amazing, amazing! And and that was just one of those things where uh, we were casting for uh, uh, for the series, and she called up. She's I'm bored. What do you got? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you you know, it doesn't well, pay well. This is what it is. Like you're not going to like this. But we got but, a series. And, and, and she read it. She's like, oh my god, I want in because it, it, it it's it's a fun show. And uh, and she's the one who brought in Grant. She's like, I got a great actor for you. And um, uh, and, and Grant was phenomenal. I mean, just really brought in gravitas, not just because of the accent, sure. uh, but because he's a really good actor. I, I don't know Grant. Uh, he's from Sci-Fi World. Oh, okay. Uh, so, All right. um, and, um, uh, and 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 a few other people that I'm probably forgetting that I should remember. Who who uh, Tyler Christopher is in it, a soap opera uh, guy. Anyways. Um, the uh, the bottom oh uh, of course Billy, and I Billy, worked with Tyler Chris no uh, and, and Billy Baldwin's in it oh um, Billy's great Billy's He's great done other movies for yeah. you guys uh, and um, and basically it's very much in our asylum world it sure. is a disaster series it is about a family that um, uh, that are able to because they're so special, uh, you know, stop <laughs> the giant earthquake, the big volcano eruption, uh, you know, the uh, uh, upcoming the, ice the age. big disaster of the week. Pretty much. And, um, I mean, ultimately, there's a tapestry that it, it all makes sense and works. And then if we go into season two, we'll be able to, uh, we could play with that. And we have kind of where we want to go in a, in a five-season arc. Um, but this will be playing on our... Most likely on our fast channel um, uh, um, platforms, our silent movie channel, that kind of thing. We have not released it yet. We've released them as individual movies. So basically, you have you have this series, but in so some places are, are so two episodes will be equal to a movie, forty five sure. minutes each. And so, oh, that's smart. And so, in so, well, some people just know us as movies and not right. television, even though we do Z Nation and Black Summer and everything else. Sure. But um, uh, so, in some markets, it's being released as one. Um, movie so 20.0 mega quake or right. super volcano and <laughs> you know but it'll just have happen to have the same sure. characters that kind of play into <laughs> that but exact you, same script <laughs> not the same script but uh, uh, you know there is a through line so you can watch them as three movies as a series but it really is a six uh, episode um, series and so uh, that's how we're trying to position it domestically I don't think this has been released um, domestically yet in that way I think we're gonna make a big announcement at um, oh I might have blown the announcement right now who knows because um, again I don't deal with distribution so uh, uh, during just Comic forget everything forget you just everything heard or about this is an exclusive said, um, so well, you heard it here first folks that's right uh, but I think at Comic Con we're going to do something big with that. We're also doing something big at Comic Con, which is our uh, big ten year anniversary for Sharknado release. Ten years, wow. ten years, That's crazy, crazy. I mean, twenty five years, uh, six, six and ten. Although it feels like seven, yeah, <laughs> feels um, like seven point yeah. five. So we're re releasing <laughs> um, uh, the original. Um, we are um, uh, juicing it with uh, making it 4K. We're going to change some of the visual effects and to kind of upgrade them to make them better. I don't know. Sure. Put the George Lucas Star Wars you know makeover on it, 
And um, uh, just kind of like, uh, and I know Anthony, the director, wants to include some additional footage and stuff. So, uh, I'm sure, there's it, a ton of stuff that didn't make it in there. Yeah, and I think they're pitching it now uh, at CinemaCon for a theatrical, like multi, like a lot of theaters kind of thing. Uh, it'll be new for us in, in the way we platform, uh, you know, these movies. And I'm just very excited by it. It's just, it's just a fun little, like, wow, 10 years, and it's our biggest you know, show to date, you know, so we'll, it, it's a fun little party. Well, maybe you, not the pure. <laughs> well, you deserve it, David. Uh, I thank you for every, everything you've done for me and you've got a great team and your production staff. Everybody's wonderful. What do you want to tell the, uh, the fans out there? Oh goodness. Uh, well, look, first of all, thank you, uh, for, uh, for watching the shows that we, that we make and, and, you know, just understand we, we have a great deal of passion and fun making them, uh, and, uh, enjoy putting them out there for you to see and enjoy interacting with the fans too. Um, so feel free to write letters. I, we get a lot of, uh, uh, hope you die letters. So it's always nice to get, uh, uh some <laughs> good positive feedback. Uh, and, you know, just understand that we all enjoy what we, that, what we do, which is really just uh, uh, a wonderful opportunity and to get through this life with something that you, you, you love doing. So, And what do you want to tell the future filmmakers out there? Uh, you know, don't say don't no. Don't do it. No. Don't. <laughs> it, it Run. <laughs> uh, you know, like everything don't else, it. It, it's going to be a different business now. I mean, it was, I mean, it's a different business now than it was 20 years ago, than it was, you know, when Roger Corman was making movies, it'll be different 20 years from, from now. And, you know, I think the, the big thing is be passionate about what you do. Yep. Um, uh, that's going to really sustain you. Don't be foolish in, you know, uh, in what's important in life too, because family is, is important. And, uh, you know, you don't want to bypass those, those opportunities too for, uh, the bigger things because at the end of the day, you know, you can have a couple movies, but having, you know, a spouse and kids is, is good too. If that's important to you, it's important to me. So, you know, that was, uh, you know, I think you don't want to give up. I know people that did give that up because, you know, the, they were chasing the bigger picture. Um, and don't say no to opportunity too. I mean, you know, uh, I think, I think the filmmakers of today are a lot more flexible because there's a lot more opportunity of things going on. Yeah. And so, you know, you could present yourself very creatively, find different avenues of, of, of what to do. I, I certainly, you know, I love learning new technology and whatnot, but it's definitely a younger person's, uh, you know, uh, world out there in sure that regard. Is. And there's so much, there's so much great things to, to do. It's, it's, I'm very jealous. Well, know. it's so easy. You can make a movie on your phone. You can edit it on your, on your I, computer. It's a, you know, we had to shoot film and get it developed and, and yeah. it's so much easier. I always just say, do it, make it. Even if you fail, you're going to learn. Just get out there and do it. Absolutely. David, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Out There. 